Hello all, I hope you're having a great month. In this e-learning installment, we'll be talking about talk. Take a look at the best practices document attached to this email and notice how many of the best practices refer to teacher talk or student talk. Remember that in the communicative approach, students learn a language by using it to communicate real messages. This means that students should always be the ones doing the majority of talking in an ELLA classroom. Our teacher talk can profoundly influence the amount and quality of student talk. A key component of the communicative approach is the input hypothesis, which states that language learners learn best when the language input is just above their current level. So if I is the learner's current level, then our teacher talk should be at I plus one. Notice that it's I plus one, not I plus five or I plus 10. We want our language to be just above their current level so that it's a little bit out of reach for students, but with support, students can reach a little further than they would be able to on their own. So when we think about I plus one talk, we know that we need to reduce the amount that we say, simplify everything that we say, and slow down the speed of our talk. Let's look at some examples with special guest star, Chila. Teacher one, so what I want you to do is go ahead and stand up and chat with your neighbors about what your favorite kind of food is to eat if you can find someone to talk to. Teacher two, stand up, talk to your neighbor. What is your favorite food? Teacher one. Okay, so now you're gonna take a look at this picture. It's a really busy picture, there's a lot going on, and tell me all the things you see the people uh, doing here in this funny picture. What are they doing? Teacher two, look at this picture. What are all the people doing? Write three sentences. Did you notice that Chila's speech was clearer, simpler, and slower? This is important at all proficiency levels. Clear, concise speech that is free of fillers is not baby talk. It still pushes students out of their comfort zones, but remember we want I plus one, not I plus 10. And this kind of I plus one teacher talk is even more effective when you combine it with three to five seconds of wait time, like we talked about in the previous e-learning. Our second topic is levels of questioning. Have you ever asked your students a question and gotten a blank stare. Let's look at an example. Dime de su experiencia en su posición hoy en su trabajo en Literacy Connects. ¿Y qué son sus metas para el futuro? Let's take a look at the hierarchy of questions, which is going to help us manage those blank stares from our students. So the most important element here is the context. Let's say in class we've been talking about classroom words. If I then ask a question about Washington DC, that's totally out of context and it's going to be really hard for students to answer. So I want to make sure that I keep things in this context. Now the most basic way for a student to show comprehension is to point. So I have a, a pencil and a pen and so I can say, point to the pencil, point to the pen. And the students can show me how much they know. If they're good with that, then we can move up to the yes, no questions. Is this a pen? No. Is this a pencil? Yes. If students are good with that, then I can move up to either or. Is this a pencil or a pen? If they're good with that, then I can move up to WH questions. What is this? So if I get up here and I see that students are struggling, no problem, I can just move back down the hierarchy to an easier level until the students feel confident and can respond and show me how much they know and can do. ¿Tienes un trabajo hoy? Sí. ¿Qué es su trabajo? Es... Soy... En, 
entrenadora de voluntarios. ¿Qué quieres hacer para su trabajo en el futuro? En el futuro... Uh... ¿Te gusta tu trabajo? Sí, me gusta mi, mi trabajo. ¿Por qué te gusta tu trabajo? Porque los voluntarios son muy amables y simpáticos. This hierarchy of questions is an important tool for when you ask a question and you get crickets. This doesn't necessarily mean that your students don't know the answer. It may mean that they didn't understand your question. So all you need to do is go back down the hierarchy until you reach a simpler level. And again, when you combine this with three to five seconds of wait time, it's even more effective. The third and final component of I plus one teacher talk is awareness of the ratio of teacher talk time to student talk time. Remember that we want students to be doing the majority of the talking in the classroom. And so you can reflect on your teaching, your interaction with students after class and think about who did the most talking. Similarly, you can ask your team Maybe your mentor teacher, if there's an assistant in the classroom, ask them to observe your teacher talk time and give you feedback. Your task for this e-learning installment is to pay attention to your teacher talk and then email me. How can you modify and simplify your teacher talk? And how do your students respond when you do this?